Welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you step by step how to value a stock. We will enter the company's financial information and capital structure into my Excel model. Then we determine whether the stock is a buy or a sell. At the end we calculate and analyze the financial ratios. I am doing this with you throughout the entire video so it's like we're doing it together. Leave a comment and I'll be sure to answer. We're going to look at Wix.com. This is an Israeli software company providing cloud-based development services. It allows users to create websites and mobile sites through the use of online drag and drop tools. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $15.8 billion. That's the value of the company according to the stock market. We also need to see what they're trading at. 286.86 a share. And then we need to pull the free cash flows. And that's how you value a company. You estimate the future free cash flows and then discount that number back to today's value. That's what I'm doing in this video. And the free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. Now I need the net income, which is the profit and loss on the income statement. And we also need the revenue, which are the sales for each year. That's also an income statement. You can see they have negative net income yet positive free cash flow. So they're passing through a lot of non-cash items, but the company is generating positive cash, which is the most important thing. And the revenue is increasing a lot each year. So they seem to be growing at a rapid pace. Let's look at a capital structure. They pay 21 million of interest on their debt. Let's go to the balance sheet to see how much debt they have. Go to the liability section. Long-term debt of $359 million. That's debt due after 12 months. Since they're losing money every year, they don't pay taxes. The cost of debt is 6%. We need the beta to get the cost of equity. The beta is how volatile the stock is relative to the market. It's pretty volatile, 1.86. So the stock moves almost two times the market. So when it's a volatile stock, you want a greater return on your investment for the greater risk you're taking. Let's go back to the balance sheet, get their current assets. We need this to calculate the current ratio later. That's 764 million. And that's 726 million of cash, the best asset. 16 million in net receivables and 9.3 million of other. We also need the current liabilities. That's 441 million. And let's see what that is. 37 million of accounts payable, 95 million of accrued liabilities, 289 million of deferred revenues, and 2.7 million of other. Stockholders' equity is 207 million. That's the value of the company according to the balance sheet. That's 94,000 of common stock, negative 404 million of retained earnings. Because retained earnings is all your net incomes in the past. And they've been reporting negative net income, so they have negative retained earnings and 1.3 million of accumulated other comprehensive income. We also need the operating income, that's on the income statement, negative 80 million dollars. We need that to calculate the interest coverage ratio later. So their cost of debt is 6%, weight of debt is 63%, cost of equity is 16.5%, weight of equity is 37%. The WAC is 10%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and the cost of equity, and that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. We discounted those numbers back to today using a weighted average cost of capital that's here in green. And we get a value of the company of $4.2 billion. We divide that by 55 million shares and we get a calculated stock price of $76. They're trading at 287, so they're trading at a significant premium. So it's a sell according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street has. They're at 103, so they're also saying the company is overvalued. So let's see where the stock has been trading. So it looks like it's been only going up during coronavirus. So this is the kind of stock that's not going to report great financials because they're growing. But the stock price is going to go up because investors feel the future of the company is going to be really strong or they just think other people feel the future of the company is going to be strong and they want to cash in on the company's increasing stock price. But the only way to cash in is you have to sell your stock before it crashes, if it does. Let's look at the financial ratios. Negative PE, terrible price to sales, terrible price to book. So PE is stock price over earnings per share. 
To calculate earnings per share, that's net income of shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so they have negative PE. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue or shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 21. So investors are paying $21 for $1 of revenue. They're not providing a good ratio because their stock price is so high. If their stock price was lower, then it would appear much better. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 76. So investors are paying $76 for $1 book value. Good current ratio, bad interest coverage ratio, and bad ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so that's good, they can cover their current debts and payables. Negative net income, so negative ROE. Negative EBIT, so negative interest coverage ratio. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Adobe, Blackberry, Microsoft, Oracle, Palo Alto, Square, and VMware. And if Wix has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they're in green, they're better than the average. So they're in worse in pretty much every category except current ratio. They're a little better than the average. So in terms of debt, they're 63% debt. The average is 44%. So they're a little leveraged. It's not terrible. They still have some room to borrow. And they're a decent sized company, $15 billion. It's not small. But relative to the average, you have some monsters here like Microsoft and Oracle and Adobe. So it seems like a company that has a great future, but it can be really risky because they're not really making any profit. And also, this is a difficult time. Let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment. I'll be sure to answer. Thanks for watching.